I want what he's having. That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super episode 125 just rolled along and uh... Whoa, Toppo got hench. With imposing presence, God of Destruction Toppo descends. Imposing? Well that's the biggest understatement of the entire arc. But anyway, let's get on to the review- <laughs> Uh, hey guys! I think I've been sent back in time for some reason. Wait, this is a Dragon Ball video. Dang it, Trunks! Well, I guess... T today's video is sponsored by the good people over at Verve. This month I've been dabbling in the new series Recovery of an MMO Junkie as well as the brand new season of Food Wars over on Crunchyroll. It's nice to truly get back into the swing of anime. Oh, I've missed it so much. In fact, if you've got any recommendations for any brand new anime to check out, do let me know. If you're not on Verve yet, for a limited time, you can get 30 days of premium free on me by going to verve.co forward slash masako, or by just clicking my link in the description. Verve and its new premium service gives you the ability to watch whatever you want, wherever you want. Even on the go without an internet connection. 1080p, 12 channels, that's a lot. You can check out the likes of Funimation, Crunchyroll, as well as the Curiosity Stream. Right now, you can use the 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium to pretty much discover whatever you want. Who knows, you might find something new, just like I'm doing. Don't forget, Verve also offers Dragon Ball Super dubbed as well as subbed. Go to verve.co's forward slash masako or click the link in the description to get a 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium today. Or later this week, I think. Right, I'm gonna try and see if I can get back to the present. See you guys there! I hope. Okay, are we good? Thank you all so much for taking part in last week's fan art challenge, hashtag the bang is down. I had some really wacky, interesting and funny entries. And you'll actually get to see a selection of those later on in this review. And also stay tuned and keep an ear out for the next fan art challenge coming up at some point in this video. All right. Let's go. When we last left off, Goku and Vegeta were, surprise surprise, fighting Jiren, and Frieza and Gohan were fighting against Dispo, with unfortunately Gohan biting the dust with Frieza lending a hand, or really getting a bit too enthusiastic about what was going on. And I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't one of the strongest of episodes. Come the beginning of episode 125 and not much has changed really. Goku and Vegeta are fighting Jiren, and Android 17 proves to be one of the best characters in this entire arc. In any case, the two Saiyans are trying to kick glorious space alien booty and are instead getting kicked in the shins. However, Goku decides to do a thing. Here we go. Okay, it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be original. It's gonna be something really innovative. It's a full Nelson. Okay, are we just really repeating loads of Z stuff? I mean, we had Cell with Jiren. Now we're getting the full Nelson from Raditz. I mean, come on guys. There's homages and then there's just copying. And it would have been pretty cool if it actually amounted to anything. We'd just see Vegeta Final Flash and then, pfft, yeah, like we know what was going to happen. But the biggest question here, how did Jiren block it this time? It's his eyes. He has eye beams. This is the first time we've seen eye beams since Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta back in the day. It's cool in some ways, but cheap in others. So after that incident, Vegeta gets it back in the face and Goku gets body straight into a mountain. Hooray for diversity! Vegeta then dons the obvious overalls and says that Jiren is not sweating at all and that he's really strong. Um, I think Goku elaborated that on the last episode there, mate. And we actually get to see the true blueness of his form without the aura. He is a beautiful sky blue, whereas Goku's like a really artificial blue raspberry. Gohan then tries to boost morale for all concern, that saying that Goku and Vegeta will still win the day. How exactly? Well, he doesn't know, but they will anyway. I mean, yeah, to be fair, it is Dragon Ball, but I think you need a little bit more than that, mate. Almost as warmly as he did with Roshi, Beerus finally calls Gohan by his name. Well, I mean, he mistakes him for Goku's kid initially, but he still calls him Gohan, so that's progress at least. That means at least it showed that Gohan did a thing. Gohan, being polite to a fault, then thanks everybody by bowing down, and with a mixture of pride and embarrassment, Goku looks up and says, Yeah, my kid's doing a thing. That or he thinks Gohan found a shiny penny. Whatever way, Goku's kind of interested. But this is a call to action for Goku and Vegeta to do something. Pretty much the same thing as we've seen before, but hey, why not? It might work this time. Meanwhile, Seventeen is trying to dodge the Toppo train as he's just hurling justice attacks hard and fast. Oh, how I've missed those. Give me that justice, Toppo. Don't you stop. 
Seventeen then checks how much time is remaining in the tournament. Probably the only character that I'm aware of in the actual arena that is aware of the actual time. And he then just thinks, well, let's just run out the clock. Can we just agree at this point, the fact that Seventeen is completely unflappable, that he is the true MVP of this arc? He has just done so much, his composure is excellent, and mm, and once again, we have to remember that just like his sister, he has an infinite pool of energy. So basically, he just has to keep blasting at Toppo, basically spamming attacks like most people would do in a fighting game, guilty as charged, until the time runs out and then Universe 7 wins. I wonder if this is something that he subconsciously remembered when he was inside Cell and Ten Shinhan was using the Shinki Koho so many times. Oh my god, Toppo has a mouth, guys. Guys, Toppo has a mouth. I, I, I never thought I'd see the day that we'd actually get to see his wonderful dentures. The big bushy beard has parted and he then spouts an attack of justice so great that we mere mortals cannot hear it. It is that epic. We then get a beam struggle which truly overwhelms Seventeen and despite the infinite energy, he's about to go off the edge. But wait, we have to remember something. Where's Freezer been? Well, here he is. But the specific answer is somewhere right between Topo's spine and his kidneys. So, you know, these are with his kidney punches. But no, it's not a kidney punch this time. It's just a finger beam. Pretty standard fare for Freezer. Maybe Freezer saving the kidney punch for later. Now, this would be a really good time for Freezer just to blast an energy beam or ball as equal to 17s, and then just jam Toppo in a beam sandwich, and that might be the end of it. But no, he's just taking pot shots because he can. He's getting cocky as Golden Freezer. I guarantee you. He's going to get his comeuppance sooner or later. But then Freezer goes for the gut and just completely trounces Toppo's justice rhetoric. <gasps> oh, Freezer, you did not just do that. How dare you mock justice? And I will not have that from you, sir. No, sir. Oh my god, Freezer looks terrifying. Freezer then decides to end it, and Toppo is overcome by brilliant white light. But the one thing we have to remember here is that we're not even 10 minutes into the episode. And, yeah, this isn't going to happen midway through the episode. There's got to be a catch here. Sure enough, Krillin and we spot that Toppo hasn't arrived in the stands yet, so therefore he is still on the battlefield. He is, but he's looking a bit rough. Okay, so, it all starts with Toppo's suit falling to pieces and falling to the ground. And then we see a topless Toppo. Oh, goodness. Toppo is eschewing justice for good. He thinks it's worthless now. There is nothing in this world for him. So now he's going to give up mortality and embrace the power of the God of Destruction. No, Topo, no! Justice is your ally, your best friend, your secret lover. Basically, all this talk about a mortal having the power of a God of Destruction, it wasn't necessarily towards Jiren. It might have been towards Topo. This is what has been leading up to it for all this time. So Topo is going to be the next God of Destruction. And okay. This is going to be a really cool point here. Not only do the visuals look cool, but we're seeing a really interesting piece of Dragon Ball lore unfold before us. We are seeing the birth of a God of Destruction. That's kind of neat, isn't it? And if I think there were a button, well, let's just say a justice button, Frieza not only pressed it, he smashed it and curled it up into teeny tiny pieces. In fact, this gives me an idea for today's fan art challenge. Send your fan art over to me at my Twitter at MasterCoX using the hashtag justice button and I will retweet them and collect them for next week's review. So think something big here, something for Toppo's grand entrance into the God of Destruction lifestyle. Yeah, really go big with this one. Good luck. Freezer's power is nothing and why? Toppo is literally bathed in the power of destruction. Damn. Now, okay, I see exactly what they're doing here. Frieza fought Sidra's destruction energy in episode 94 and 95, and he was able to contain it, whereas Goku couldn't. But the thing we have to remember here is that Sidra only gave a fraction of his energy, and Toppo, judging from his bed, he's giving everything he's got into this charge attack. The stadium is cracked in half, the sky is blown away to look so beautiful and nuts and insane. It's, oh, whoa, okay. This is real endgame territory. It's not just a murky mess. So I have no idea where Freezer is right now, but he must be pretty banged up. As for Toppo, though, he has reached a level beyond justice. And this might have been something he alluded to earlier in the arc when he was kind of worried that justice wasn't the way to go. This is just the end point of that slight wobble of confidence. We're seeing Toppo's mindset of, you know, he's using justice to deny his power of a god of destruction, and now he's just given up and allowed it to 
flow through his veins. He has searched his feelings and known it to be true. Seventeen tries to defend himself, but his barrier is nowhere near enough to stop Topper's power. And I think that might be the first time I've ever seen Seventeen's shield break like that. So Seventeen tries to think of different ways to try and hit Toppo, but nothing's working really. And realistically, nothing can. Nothing can damage him, nothing can get near him without it being destroyed. As we see, a very hapless rock get in the way. He's basically indestructible, impervious, and ripped. Oh daddy, Toppo no. And then things get wackier because Toppo then launches another destructive ball, Seventeen dodges it, it heads towards the stands, but then it doesn't. A nice little bit of peril there because you think, oh, okay, these guys are in danger. However, uh, this proved to be a bit of a major turning point, which I think will come up later on in the episodes. It takes a long time for Topo to charge his attack, so he is left open in some kind of way, if it weren't for his shield, of course, but it reminds me a bit of Hachiak, so maybe something might be used about that later on. However, uh, that might have to wait for a bit because Frieza survived the blast and, okay, uh, right, okay, I know what they're doing here as well. Did this, this shot of Frieza? Don't you remember that from when the Goku used the spirit bomb? He looks exactly like that after the aftermath. So basically, Toppo, spirit bomb, Frieza falls down. They're just mimicking Namek right now. So yeah, the callbacks are strong again. And it continues further when Frieza gets really angry. The expression's there too. And hurls a death ball in Toppo's direction. But in a laughable way as well, Toppo just flicks a speck of destructive energy and it completely negates Frieza's attack out of desperation. And man, Frieza's being wrecked and it looks amazingly disturbing. I mean, we wanted to see Frieza get all the powers of the God of Destruction and Corrupt System from within, but I think at this moment I really don't see that happening. Toppo is just way too much. You may think that Frieza's out of the tournament, but he still remains in the ring. Barely. What are the odds that Frieza's just forgotten about for the rest of the tournament and Universe 7 still wins on technicality due to numbers? Imagine that. The episode ends with Seventeen standing up against Toppo willingly, and then we get a near beam struggle before we get a still frame, and it just caps everything off to say that Seventeen is completely unflappable. He is not scared whatsoever. He's just saying, eh, gonna do my best, I guess. He really wants that boat. All in all, this episode was much better than the one last week, and it had some really interesting tidbits concerning the Dragon Ball Super lore and the Gods of Destruction and stuff. We don't need the manga here. We kind of saw the birth of the God of Destruction, or at least an apprentice. It really kind of gave some relevance to the series, as well as really set up the end game for it. The animation was also much more solid than last week, despite some recycled animation getting in there, but it was far less apparent than last week. I mean, that was just ridiculous. As for Toppo being a God of Destruction in waiting, oh my, I think I've gone on about that long enough, but it still has to be said. Nice. But anyway. That was my review for Dragon Ball Super episode 125. Tune in next time for my review of episode 126. Until then, be sure to like and subscribe. Enjoy the fact that I'm recording this live from the TFS studio. And yeah, let's get on with the fan art, guys. Catch you later.